Health, safety, and environmental, or HSE compliance, is a core business value of Hawaiian dredging construction. This is represented by our commitment to zero incidents. We achieve zero incidents by creating a foundation for HSE excellence. We expect employees to work safe and prevent incidents by following requirements outlined in this video and the projects assigned. This video orients you of the key components, policies, and expectations of the HSC. Talk with your appropriate supervisor about any questions, concerns, or information about this program. Download our free Health, Safety, and Environmental Program app available via Google Play or on the Apple App Store. This app offers HSE program, videos, observation reporting, suggestions for deficiency reporting, and updated news about safety. With roots going back to 1902, Hawaiian Dredging Construction Company, Inc. is the oldest and largest full-service general contractor in the state of Hawaii, executing interesting and complex projects. Our work is organized into five divisions spanning the entirety of today's major construction. As Hawaii's most diversified contractor, Hawaiian Dredging self-performs more projects than any other in the state while offering our clients the collective expertise and resources of all five divisions to meet their building needs. Today consistently ranked at the top of Building Industry Magazine's annual list of the top 25 contractors in the state of Hawaii, Hawaiian Dredging has played an integral role in the development of Hawaii's economy and infrastructure in improving the quality of life in our island communities. Aloha, I'm Jerry Mike, President of Hawaiian Dredging Construction Company. I would like to welcome you to our ohana. In this orientation video, you're introduced to the key components of our health, safety, and environmental program. We believe in providing and maintaining the safest working conditions for our employees, subcontractors, vendors, and the public. This is achieved by promoting safe, efficient, and quality production. Safety is a shared obligation from people working on our projects. We expect everyone's cooperation and efforts to prevent injuries. Zero Incident is our mission and safety excellence is our commitment. Employees are obligated to provide leadership and participate in ensuring a safe working site and zero harm to the environment. Supervisors are obligated to equip employees with the knowledge, skills, and motivation to safely plan and execute the work and maintaining clean and orderly areas. Our mission as a family is ensuring employees arrive and leave the job every day healthy and safe. Remember, hey, ahana kako. Video Overview People unfamiliar with construction are in awe at a building rising from our island soil or when added space to our waterfront is created to improve the handling of goods arriving on our shores. It takes years of planning, millions of dollars, and a team of hardworking, dedicated, and skilled employees working together to improve the quality of life for our island communities. On our projects, we strive to ensure a safe and productive worksite with zero harm to the environment. Achieving these goals requires an understanding of the HSE program. The program includes the following major elements this video introduces you to. Leading indicators, health practices, safety practices, emphasis on four focus hazards and controls, environmental practices. Hawaiian Dredging's HSE program meets or exceeds compliance with the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 1970. We subscribe to the intent and purpose of the Act and assure compliance with the rules and regulations adopted by the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, or OSHA, and Hawaii Division of Occupational Health and Safety, or HIOSH. Section 5 of the Occupational Health and Safety Act outlines the duties and responsibilities of the employer and the employee in assuring safe and healthful work environments. A short quiz follows this video with questions based on hazard recognition and best practices. Leading Indicator Program Our Leading Indicator Program has six key program management systems to help achieve our goal of zero incidents. These elements are Incident Prevention Program, Orientation and Training, AHA PTI Development, Daily Observations, Weekly Reporting, Leading Indicator Measuring System. Incident Prevention Plan 
planning for a safe construction job site begins during the pre-construction phase with estimating, operations, and the HSE department evaluating risks. Key project members coordinate a pre-construction safety planning meeting after contract awards to develop a site-specific incident prevention plan. The plan identifies and plans for unique project risks and specific controls to eliminate or minimize the risk. Orientation and training. This video is the first step in the orientation process. You will complete an orientation at every project you are assigned during your Hawaiian dredging career. The on-site orientation includes unique hazards and other site-specific conditions. The assigned superintendent reviews the expectations of the HSE compliance during each orientation. New employees of Hawaiian dredging will receive a four-week safety evaluation. This evaluation ensures you are situating appropriately to our policies and procedures. Every project management personnel are required to complete Hawaiian Dredge and Safety training, including the OSHA 30-hour, start, and complete the STSC certification. AHA and Pre-Task Instruction, PTI, LIP. Activity Hazard Analysis, AHA, and Pre-Task Instruction, PTI, are tools for crew planning of each activity. AHAs are used for high-risk work and PTIs are conducted daily. They are documented and audited for completion by the project management team. These collaborative sessions are conducted with the crew foreman. Crew members are encouraged to share their concerns, experiences, and ask questions about the instruction of the task. These sessions include the activity performed, tools and equipment needed, assignment of each employee on the task, and safety practices. Daily Observation Hawaiian dredging employees, its contractors, suppliers, clients, and any other personnel are obligated to stop work upon identification of an unsafe work practice or condition. Employees are expected to inspect his or her work areas for potential hazards. If you observe a hazard, take a moment to correct it or contact your immediate supervisor. When everyone works together to eliminate unsafe condition, this creates an environment and culture of caring for everyone. Project team leaders are expected to complete at least one daily safety observation when walking the project. This observation can be completed on the HSE Safety App or Daily Inspection Report. Observations should note both substandard and positive observations. Employees observe completing positive observations can earn safety rewards. Weekly reporting. Weekly reports are submitted as an accountability tool to report on the week's HSE activities and future activities. At the end of the month, the project manager and superintendent report on all safety activities they've conducted. Leading indicator measurements. To verify that our Leading Indicator Program is effective, each project undergoes Leading Indicator Program audits every six months to determine compliance with our HSC Safety Program and Safety Culture. These audit scores are recorded and noted as part of the Management Team's Performance Review. Health Program Employee health is emphasized at Hawaiian Dredging. Exposure to chemical hazards are controlled on the HDCC projects through various engineering or work practice controls. We also conduct health monitoring for HDCC employees, including chest x-rays, audiometric checks, and respiratory testing. HASCOM Right to Understand, SDS. All Hawaiian dredging employees, subcontractors, and visitors working around hazardous chemicals and other toxic substances have a right to understand the possible dangers and how HDCC protects them from exposure. In accordance with 29 Code of Federal Regulations 1910.1200, HDCC will assess hazards and provide information to employees about the potential exposures to hazardous chemicals. The Health, Safety, and Environmental Director is responsible for the development of the program, including reviewing and updating it as necessary. Our HASCOM program is available 24-7 through the Hawaiian Dredging HSE app. The Hazard Communication Standard, HCS, is now aligned with the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, GHS. Our MSDS online system provides access to safety data sheets, SDS, and GHS labels of every chemical on HDCC projects. The labels used on the chemicals are intended to convey information about the hazards posed by the chemical through standardized label elements, including symbols, signal words, and hazard statements. All HDCC personnel are trained on the SDS and or hazards prior to initial assignment or to a job or use of a new chemical or product. 
If you have questions, consult your direct supervisor or the on-site safety professional. Silica management. Exposure to respirable crystalline silica dust during construction activities can cause silicosis. Once diagnosed, there is little hope for recovery. Employees working with or near silica dust generating activities are medically evaluated to ensure exposure is not occurring. Many activities such as jackhammering, drilling, cutting brick tile, sawing, or generating concrete have the potential to generate silica containing dust. Contact your supervisor or the on-site safety professional to ensure proper dust control measures are implemented. The controls may include the use of vacuum shrouds, wet methods, or the use of a properly selected respirator. Respiratory Protection Program Employees exposed to respirable hazards and assigned a respirator follow HDCC Respiratory Protection Program. Exposed employees require the use of a respirator after they are medically cleared. Medical clearance is valid based on the American Thoracic Society guidelines and the evaluation of doctors' recommendations. Employees received annual fit testing for approved respirators and trained in their proper use. Volunteer use of respirators are prohibited unless approved by the HSE department. Hearing Conservation Program Employees receive annual audiometric testing and issued hearing protection. Hearing protection is worn for sound levels exceeding 90 decibels or greater or when normal speech cannot be heard within 3 feet. Daily Warm Up Warming up your body each day prior to starting work is important to minimize the potential of muscle injuries on the job. It is required to warm up as a group. This allows each person to start the day focused on safety. Safety Program PPE Employees, visitors, vendors, and anyone entering Hawaiian dredging construction projects requires the following 100% personal protective equipment. Head protection, or hard hats, complying with the current ANSI Z89 requirements. Hard hat protection against impact or penetration by falling or flying objects and from shock and burns caused by electrical equipment hazards. Eye protection or safety glasses, including prescription eyewear, meets the current ANSI Z87 design and use criteria ANSI Z87. Safety glasses protect against chemical burns, cutting, welding, handling molten material, impact, or projectile hazards. Hand protection meeting ANSI ICEA 105 must be used 100% of the time. Clothing includes shirts with sleeves covering the shoulder on the arm at least 4 inches, long pants, trousers, or jeans worn from the waist to the ankle, and proper substantial leather footwear covering the ankle. High visibility clothing meeting ANSI 107. Colors include safety yellow, lime green, and orange. Hearing protection consisting of earplugs, earmuffs, or a combination of both. Focus for hazards. There are four construction activities where there is an elevated potential for serious injury or death. These are called the OSHA Focus for Hazards. Fall protection, electrical, struck by, and caught in between hazards. Falls in construction. Most sites have unprotected sides and edges, wall openings, or floor holes at any moment during construction. The lack of protection results in injuries from falls or falling objects may result, ranging from sprains and concussions to death. Falls to a lower level are a major cause of fatalities in construction. Factors such as improperly covered or protected holes and openings are common fall hazards. The HDCC program ensures these fall hazards are eliminated or minimized. Protection includes activities with fall hazards with a trigger height of six feet or more and water's edge require prevention or protection. The hierarchy of fall prevention controls include engineering systems, passive systems, and active systems. No exceptions for infeasibility regarding with the use of controlled access zones, warning lines, or safety monitors are allowed on Hawaiian dredging construction projects. Engineering systems are the primary choice of fall prevention. Engineering systems eliminate the potential of fall hazards based on a design or change in the construction method. Passive systems consist of guardrails, hole covers, scaffolds, or aerial lifts. Guardrails are made of wood, wire rope, pipe, or iron. Construction top rails at a height of 39 inches through 45 inches. 
Top rails must be capable to withstand 200 pounds of directional force. Construct mid rails midway between the top rail and the working surface. Mid rails must be capable of withstanding 150 pounds of directional force. Tow boards are at least three and a half inches high. Gaps along the tow board are no larger than a quarter of an inch. Screens, nets, or panels are required when tools, materials, or equipment are piled higher than the tow boards. Any hole opening two inches or larger requires a hole cover. The hole cover is marked H-O-L-E and support twice the maximum load applied against the cover. The cover is secured to prevent displacement. Covers located in roadways and vehicular aisles support twice the maximum axle load of the largest vehicle expected to cross over. Ensure scaffolds are designed by a qualified person and installed by a competent person. Scaffolds can support four times its intended load. Aerial lifts are used by manufacturer requirements and appropriate fall protection is provided. Active systems are used if passive systems are not feasible and require 100% fall protection while in use. Personal fall arrest systems, PFAS, are inspected before use. Employees using PFAS is trained by an HDC assigned competent person. The A, B, C, D, E, F describe the components of personal fall arrest. A. Anchor points. Non-certified anchor points are capable of withstanding 5,000 pounds per worker attached. Certified anchor points are twice the maximum fall arrest force designed by a qualified person. If you have questions on your anchor point, consult your competent person. B. Body harnesses distribute the fall force generated to five points of your body. The user's combined body equipment and weight is between 130 pounds and 310 pounds. Employees using this equipment must inspect it prior to each use. An HDCC assigned competent person inspects and documents monthly. C. Connecting devices include lanyards, dorsal or D-rings, snap hooks or carabiners. The D-ring, snap hook, and carabiners must meet current ANSI requirements of 3,600 pound gate pressure for side loads and connection. Never connect a connector to another connector or use any matter not allowed by the manufacturer. D, deceleration devices include the shock packs or bungees in lanyards. Deceleration devices are designed to absorb your fall energy to reduce the impact of force to your body. E, Effective rescue is required for work at heights and must be completed within 15 minutes of a fall arrest event. The on-site safety professional and superintendent have the contents of the rescue for your review. F. Fall clearance and calculations ensure you don't hit the ground or strike any object when using a PFAS. The HDCC assigned competent person completes fall clearance calculations before any worker is assigned to use PFAS. Safe ladder use. The Bureau of Labor Statistics data shows that falls from ladders account for 100 fatalities each year. Factors that contribute to falls from ladders are ladder slips, top or bottom, overreaching, slipping on rung steps, defective equipment, and improper ladder selection for a given task. Frequently cited OSHA violations include not having a portable ladder extend three feet above the landing no worker training and improper use of the top step. Protections include providing safe access to all work locations with a change in elevation greater than 19 inches. Follow the safe ladder practices for your safety. Electrical hazards. Electrical hazards are part of OSHA's Focus 4. The major hazards regarding contact with energized sources are electrical shock and burns. Electrical shock occurs when the body becomes part of the electrical circuit, either when a person contacts both wires of an electrical circuit, one wire of an energized circuit, and the ground, or a metallic part that has become energized by contact with an electrical conductor. The normal wear and tear on extension and flexible cords can loosen or expose wires, creating a hazardous condition. Cords not three-wire type, not designed for hard use, or that have been modified, increase the risk of contacting electrical current. With the wide use of power tools on construction site, flexible extension cords are often necessary. Protection includes inspector tools and electrical cords. Inspect ground fault circuit interrupters systems monthly to ensure they are working properly. Employees inspect the function of the GFCI before using. 
flexible cord set contain number of conductors required for the service and the electrical ground wire. Employees inspect at least daily. Patched, oil soaked, worn, frayed, cut insulation, or having defective strain relief is not used. Removed defective cords from service by servicing the male end of the cord. Only cords 14 gauge or greater, designed for hard or extra hard use, are allowed. Protect cords from damage, including that caused by foot traffic, vehicle, and sharp corners, as well as pinching. Protect cords passing through holes with bushings or fittings. Cords are not secured by staples, hung from nails, bare wire, or other conductive materials. Mark, label, or arrange switches, fuses, and circuit breakers for readily identification of the circuit or equipment by supply. Provide ground fault circuit and interrupters for receptacle outlets providing temporary electrical power during construction, remodeling, maintenance, repair, and demolition. Test GFCI devices before each use. Receptacle outlets are not part of the permanent wiring of a building or structure is GFCI protected by one of the following means. A receptacle outlet with integrated GFCI protection. A standard receptacle outlet connected downstream of a receptacle outlet with integral GFCI protection. Receptacles protected by GFCI type circuit breaker. Temporary lighting. Protect bulbs attached to temporary wiring strings with guards. Do not suspend temporary lights by electrical wires. Replace exposed empty light sockets and broken bulbs immediately. Conduct a survey of the work activities adjacent to overhead lines and ensure safe clearance from energized lines. Develop an AHA for work near overhead power lines. Consider overhead wires energized until it is tested and cleared by the power utility. Struck by hazards. Struck by injuries are produced by forcible contact or impact between the injured person and an object or piece of equipment. Struck by hazards are categorized as follows. Struck by flying object, struck by falling objects, struck by swinging objects, struck by rolling objects. Each project presents new and unique struck by hazards. Employees wear high visibility clothing to notify operators of their presence. This is not enough to protect against struck by hazards. Struck by flying object hazards exist when something is thrown, hurled, or is being propelled across space. Struck by falling objects occurs when the injured person is crushed, pinned, or caught under a falling object other than collapsing material or structures. Struck by swinging objects occur when materials are mechanically lifted and have the potential to swing and strike workers. As the load is lifted, the material may swing, twist, or turn. Struck by rolling objects is when an object which is rolling, moving, or sliding in the same level at which the worker is located. Protection includes cranes. Ensure the ground is sufficiently level and firm to support the anticipated weight of hoisting equipment and associated loads. Assess hazards within the work zone, such as power lines, and objects or personnel within the swing radius. Erect swing radius barriers. Ensure the equipment is in safe operating condition. Comply with the manufacturer's procedures. And ensure safe attachment of rigging devices. Heavy equipment. Providing seat belts when required. Ensure proper grading of roadways for safe movement of equipment and vehicles. Ensure reverse signal alarms or spotters are in use when heavy equipment is in view. Conduct a hazard assessment of the worksite using the job site coordinator, supervisor, or foreman who should plan for the work near public roads or highways and for the safe traffic stoppage, such as trucks entering a roadway. Plan entry and exit to and from the worksite to reduce exposure to traffic. Post construction areas with legible traffic signs conforming to MUTCD and OSHA standards. Tools. Hand tools are maintained in good condition. Use of unsafe tan tools are not permitted. Use tools with guards and properly triggered mechanisms. Use two hands on power tools. Ensure certified operators use powder actuated tools. Reduce air pressure to less than 30 pounds per square inch for compressed air cleaning. Falling objects. Store materials in tiers are secured to prevent sliding, falling, or collapsing. Equip employees with tool lanyards. Apply debris nets, canopies, and other forms of falling object protection. Tow boards are erected along the edge of overhead walking and working surfaces. 
caught in between hazards. The key factors in deciding between a caught event and a struck event is whether the impact of the object alone causes the injury. When the impact alone creates the injury, the event should be recorded as struck. When the injury is created more because of crushing injuries between objects, the event should be recorded as caught events that should be classified as caught include cave-ins for trenching, being pulled into or caught in machinery and equipment. This includes strangulation as a result of clothing caught in running machinery and equipment, being compressed or crushed between rolling, sliding, or shifting objects such as semi-trailers in a dock wall or between a truck frame in a hydraulic bed that is lowering. The major hazards related to buried in or by cave-ins of unprotected trenches and excavations. Cave-ins crush or suffocate workers. In addition, trenches may contain hazardous atmospheres. Workers can drown in water, sewage, or chemicals in the trenches. And if working around underground utilities, workers may also face burns, electrocution, or explosion from steam, hot water, gas, or electricity. Workers who are working underneath large scaffolds may also be buried if the scaffold collapses. Workers may be buried and crushed by walls that collapse during demolition. You can be pinned between equipment and solid objects, such as a wall or another piece of equipment, between materials being stacked or stored in a solid object, such as a wall or other piece of equipment, or between shoring and construction materials in a trench. These types of hazards can result in multiple broken bones, asphyxiation, or death. Protection includes equipment. Ensure handheld power tools are fitted with guards and safety switches. HDCC's Lockout Tagout program ensures equipment is maintained in a zero energy state during maintenance or repair. The policy applies to equipment maintenance, inspection, and repair. Ensure authorized persons are performing demolition operations per the competent person's design. Arrange the path of travel when loading, unloading, stacking, and storing materials. Excavations. Ensure dig permits and excavation inspections are completed. Protect excavations and trenches five feet deep or more by sloping, benching, shielding, or shoring. Protect workers from falling or rolling equipment into excavations. Confined spaces. Ensure confined space is classified per HDCC policy. HDCC does not permit entry without approval. Provide air monitoring and ventilation. Ensure retrieval and rescue services are provided. Fire prevention. Each project is equipped with an emergency action plan. The plan contains the following elements. Means of reporting fires and other emergencies evacuation procedures and emergency escape route assignments, procedures for employees to remain to operate critical plant operations before they evacuate, accounting for all employees after an emergency evacuation, rescue and medical duties for employees performing them, name or job titles of persons who can be contacted. Hot work. Document hazards on the hot work permit and submit to the superintendent and the on-site safety professional for review and approval. The on-site safety professional may survey the area as part of the approval review. Clear or protect combustible materials and ignition sources within 35 feet of the operation. Protect opening or cracks in walls, floors, or ducts within 35 feet of the operation. Evaluate fire hazards 30 minutes after completing hot work with a fire watch. Ensure a charged fire extinguisher or other appropriate firefighting equipment is on hand and ready for use. Fire extinguishers. Provide portable fire extinguishers and mount, locate, and identify them so they are readily accessible to employees without subjecting the employee to possible injury. Provide portable fire extinguishers for employees' use. Select and distribute fire extinguishers based on the types of anticipated workplace fires and on the size and degree of hazards that would affect their use. Distribute portable fire extinguishers for use in Class A fires so that the travel distance for employees to any extinguisher is 75 feet or less. Distribute portable fire extinguishers for use in Class B fires so that the travel distance for employees to any extinguisher is 50 feet or less. Distribute portable fire extinguishers for use on Class C hazards on the appropriate pattern for the existing Class A or B hazards. 
inspect, maintain, and test all portable fire extinguishers in the workplace. Visually inspect portable extinguishers or hoses monthly. Perform an annual maintenance check on portable fire extinguishers. Environmental. HDCC recognizes environmental protection as one of our guiding principles and a component of sound business performance. We have a responsibility to conserve company and natural resources. Through careful management of emissions and discharges, proper management and monitoring of waste generation, we reduce the impact of our activities. Best management practices are used to prevent or treat air pollution sources and stormwater flowing from construction sites. Work with the project team to determine the best management practices for your work activity and site. Requirements are site-specific and found in the site's environmental management plan. Follow chemical containment and waste management expectations and response in a spill. Small actions can lead to big change. Your Kokua can make a positive difference, not just for this project, but also for our community. Malama Ika Wai. Air. A dust mitigation plan is appropriate for activities generating fugitive dusts and other particulates affecting community health. The mitigation plan is part of the project's site-specific best management practices. Air pollution permit is necessary for certain activities. The permit is managed during pre-construction phase and a plan is developed, modified during construction activities as appropriate. Endangered species. The project with project designers and appropriate government agencies evaluate impact and compliance with laws protecting species and critical habitat. The project team and the health and environmental lead obtain permits for regulated activities as appropriate to ensure compliance. The project team and health and environmental leads develop a best management practice plan to protect regulated species and habitat. Spills. The project team responds timely to identified spills. The project team reports the spill to on-site safety professionals, health and environmental lead, and appropriate government agency. Notification is dependent on the product type spilled and the location of the spill. The project team conducts appropriate cleanup and disposable of wastes per environmental regulations. Waste. The project team evaluates and develops hazardous waste management practices including recycling, cement solidification, neutralization, incineration, destruction, landfill disposal, and pyrolysis. Water. The project team and the health and environmental lead evaluate and mitigate potential pollution sources during construction and revise the best management practices as site conditions change. The project team and health and environmental leads evaluate and develop a spill release plan to mitigate potential pollution sources from spills and other sources of runoff from the project. A qualified person conducts water quality testing as appropriate to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements.